So we're going to talk about the concept of polarization. So what exactly is polarization? Well, if we look at a wave, right, we can say that a wave can vibrate in many, many directions as long as it's perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. So it can go like this, it can go like this, right? Try to imagine the 3D nature of what I'm trying to draw, okay? And so we represent a wave as being uh, vibrating in all possible directions that are perpendicular to the wave propagation. So this would be like the front view of an unpolarized wave. Okay, so we call this unpolarized. And now you can, of course, force your wave, right, to pass through a polarizer, like so. And then you'll only allow this plane of vibration of the wave to pass through. Okay, and uh, just take note that only transverse waves can be polarized, okay, because it just doesn't make sense to polarize a longitudinal wave if none of the particles vibrate in any plane that is perpendicular to the direction of the wave propagation. Now, when you polarize an unpolarized wave, you will always have the intensity. So if the intensity here is I, then the intensity here will be I over 2, regardless of how you orientate this polarizer. What is interesting, though, however, is that what if you repolarize a wave that is already polarized? And for this, we look at Mellor's law. So consider a wave that's polarized in this direction, and I force it through a polarizer that is orientated at some angle theta to its original plane of polarization. Now, what will happen is that your wave will come out polarized in the direction of the polarizer, but you will sacrifice some of its amplitude. And so one way to think of this, you can think of this as two components, okay? Let's call this A parallel to the polarizer, A perpendicular to the polarizer. The polarizer will only allow this component of the amplitude to pass through. And so A parallel, as you can see, is none other than A cosine theta. And so it is the case where if my amplitude here is A, then my amplitude here will be A cosine theta. And so Mellor's law dictates that the amplitude reduces by a factor of cosine theta. And so let's write it out formally. Okay, Mellor's law says that A prime equals to A cosine theta. And if I use the fact that I is proportional to amplitude square, then I prime equals to I cosine square theta. Now, one of the interesting results that we, comes out from this is a concept known as cross-polarization. Okay, and uh, what this means is that I polarize a wave through a polarizer that's 90 degrees to what I am. And if you do this, basically, you get nothing on the other side. You can completely block out the, uh, the polarized wave. And that is because I... If I prime equals to I cosine square 90 degrees, this is zero. And so this is zero. And so when we see how I changes with theta, here we put in some of these degrees. So we, if we rotate one full circle, okay, the original I could be here. We'll drop to nine, zero at 90. 180 will be back here, so on and so forth. And you get a nice little curve that looks like a cosine squared graph, which is not surprising because it is indeed I prime is, of course, related to cosine squared theta. So that's what we need to know about polarization.